we're used to learning from paper books like uh, this O'Reilly book on C sharp, but my son's about to go to college and I have a feeling he's not going to be carrying around a lot of these. Instead, he's going to be carrying around an iPad. And I wanted to sit down with Inkling to learn about the textbook of the future. Who are you? I'm Matt McGinnis. I'm the founder and CEO of Inkling. We're a uh, startup in San Francisco uh, building the textbook of the future for iPad and devices like iPad, uh, building some really, really cool stuff. So you worked at Apple for eight years and you've seen the world. What's going on in, in, in the world of textbooks? You know, it, I was at Apple. I, I sat in the back of a lot of classrooms. Um, I worked in Apple's education group for a long time and um, I had the privilege of being, you know, there when they would put out uh, brand new MacBooks in front of, you know, 30 or 40 kids in a class. And the teacher would, um, you know, have the students with their laptops out. But when, when it came time to learn, the, the teacher would still say, open your textbooks to page 376. And it broke my heart, right? Because you had these beautiful $1,200 devices sitting in front of every student and the textbook was competing with the laptop for, for their attention. Um, and I knew sort of even then before there was an iPad that something had to give. We had to kind of reinvent this physical, static, heavy textbook that everyone was still using and replace it with something that was more dynamic, something that connected people rather than isolating people from one another, um, something that was way more akin to the way that students spend their lives outside the classroom every day anyway. And that's really what we're trying to build with Inkling. Yeah. Um, tell me about the business model first, because a lot of people don't know that, but I know that, it, that having a kid going to college, it's a hundred bucks a book, right? Yeah, now, right. Yeah, well, it can be even honestly, if you buy a new uh, biology title, it'll cost you two hundred and something just for you know a single copy of that book. Um, we were if you're taking four classes a semester. Yeah, start multiplying, right? The, in other words, the cost of the iPad no longer is the gating factor in this process, right? Right. I think the you know the hardware device and an iPad is good for more than just reading your textbooks. Obviously, I think we already think that something like ten to twelve percent of undergraduates in the U.S. already have an iPad, um, and we think that that number is going to easily double after the Christmas holiday season through this fall and then through Christmas. I mean, that's not Apple's numbers, but it's what we estimate things to be at. So, get, having the iPad is one thing. Um, you know, you talk about the business model. We work with the major publishers. We work with Pearson. We work with McGraw Hill. We work with Wiley, W. W. Norton. You name it. Um, and we take their existing market-leading titles. We sort of gently disassemble those books. We take all the existing ancillary media, so video and um, and assessment questions and uh, 3D objects, or whatever it is that they've got at their disposal. Sometimes we even build new media, and then we construct something from the ground up for the iPad. And it's compatible with the print book. So if a student is sitting next to somebody who has the physical book, you know, you can still sort of uh, stay in sync with the professor. But the dude yeah. with the iPad is having a way better experience. Yeah, and doesn't have to carry around a, a, a multi-pound book. Yeah, you know? I mean, it's carrying this around, and it's got all your textbooks on it. Plus, you, you know, with Inkling, you keep your textbooks forever, and so you can actually build that library of stuff that you can go back and refer to and use over the course of your, you know, history. I'd, we don't really believe in the notion of a time bomb software thing, you know, where you use it for a half a semester and then it ex you know, expires. Um, and so instead, what we do to sort of lower the price of things for students is, yeah, every Inkling title is somewhere between 30 and 40 percent cheaper than the print book, but we sell by the chapter, right? So students can come in and get just a single chapter of a book for $2.99 or whatever the price is and just cherry pick the stuff they need. And in a 60 chapter biology book, and they only use 15 to 20 chapters in the semester, it saves them a ton of money. There's two kinds of worlds here. One is where you've got a mixed environment where students either do or don't have iPad, and uh, some students are going to choose to get their content through an iPad, and some students are going to buy a book. And those worlds have to be compatible. So if the prof says turn to page 250, you've got to be able to turn to 250 on, in either medium. Uh, and then there are the schools that are doing iPad programs, and those are the ones that are actually giving an iPad to every incoming student. You know, it, We've got over 50 schools this fall uh, that are either recommending or requiring Inkling for their incoming students. Um, an example of this is, um, say, Cornell Medical School in Manhattan or Brown uh, Medical School. Those are two medical schools where everybody coming in gets an iPad and everyone is required to use Inkling at some level uh, in their courses. And um, you know, that, I think, is going to happen more. It's very easy to do for medical schools and business schools, but if you look at undergraduate programs, there's Seton Hill University, um, Abilene Christian University. A lot of the small private schools are actually doing these programs today, and I think you'll see that broaden over time. So 
I think two years from now, if that's your question, I think we're going to have uh, just a ton of students out there, either in those programs where they get the iPad or tons of students who just carry an iPad to school with them. And if you own one of these, you're going to demand that you get your learning content on this device. You are not going to want to go out and buy a book. I think it's really interesting to talk about how learning is changing. I, and here's where I was going with that. I interviewed a, a surgeon at Stanford, and he said everything he learned in medical school is completely obsolete. Right. He said if it wasn't for his iPhone in his hand that had the latest medical research, he would be lost right. in today's world. Do you foresee a world where we're going to buy a book for life and I, then keep coming back to it? I think so. And I, and I, you know, one of the things that we're doing with our partners is building titles that we're actually going to do away with the edition number. So if you own a copy of, you know, whatever it is, Brooker Biology or Netter's Anatomy or whatever, wh like, why do you need an edition number if it's not a physical thing, right? Because you can just update that content. And Inkling is a, Inkling is really a publishing platform. Right? We're not just about building little pieces of textbooks or whatever. I mean, we have a long-term view of this market that gives us uh, a really long runway for reinventing sort of how this stuff is published. One of the big linchpins is your ability to update that content on the fly, even if it's local on a device as it is on the iPad. So we can push an update out to a device. We, you, know, you don't have to just cut it off and then publish another edition of it. You can do it over time. Uh, you know, a lot of economics textbooks became obsolete overnight during the financial crisis. We, you know, I think we're in another one now, so they're all going to go obsolete again. But you know, that's an example of you want to put in some content about that topic or update with new knowledge in, in, that, uh, in that discipline, you should be able to do it. And that's something that Inkling lets publishers do. And you're going to see it happen. Very cool. Um, what's the experience of using a book in a class going to be like? compared to the old paper world that I grew up in? I think one of the big differences is that the book is going to be dynamic and interactive. The book, you know, we're going to continue to use the word book forever, I think, but it really is going to describe something remarkably different. One thing the book is going to do and that it does today in Inkling is that it's going to allow you to explore content in a way that isn't just linear and static. You can jump in, you can look at a 3D molecule, if that's, what's, you know, if that's the way your brain likes to learn. You can um, take assessment questions and get feedback from the questions about how you're doing. So if you get something wrong, it explains to you why you were wrong, and that helps you along the learning journey. And I think that basic level of interactivity and sort of the dynamic nature of the content is, is step number one. I think it really starts to get interesting when you look at how you take the data that you're learning, uh, that the machine is actually learning about the user, what they're doing, what they're doing well and not so well, and guides them along the path in some sort of active nature. That's still a ways off, I think, in a truly effective manner, but we're definitely gonna, gonna get there soon. One of the um, linchpins to that working is having content that is structured in a way that's semantic. You've gotta be able to structure stuff as objects and have it be sort of self-aware of, you know, of its own content to a degree, um, and you just you can't do that with something like a PDF. So here, we sort of look at this as the textbook being this one piece of a much broader spectrum of different things you have as tools in the learning process. So the, um, you know, the notion that the textbook is the sole source of information has obviously already gone out the window. The professor, your peers, everyone is, is uh, an important part of that process. So um, I mentioned that the textbook is an innately isolating thing. You know, you stick your head down and you read the book, you're alone. And so in Inkling, in the latest version we just released, 2.0, we connect people within the content. We like to say that when you download any Inkling title, you get the collective wisdom of anybody who's ever used that book before because you have access to all of the conversations of every user globally who uses that book. And then we sort the suggested conversations based on the popularity of those conversations. How many times have people starred those comments so that they could tear it off and throw it into their own notebook? Because as you work your way through Inkling content, you're dynamically assembling a study guide. Every time you make a highlight or a comment or a note, every time you see something that somebody else said that you like, it excerpts that little snippet and throws it into your notebook. And, and that's something that you can go back and study. We also have an expert in every book. So we bring your professor in. We bring the author of the book into the book and allow them to participate in the conversations that are happening inside the, the content. And so, you know, the, the, there's, there's knowing what the professor said in lecture. There's watching lecture video. There's audio from the lecture. There's um, study groups, there's the textbook, there's the conversations inside of an Inkling textbook, there's, um, there's Wikipedia. I mean, there's just so many different places a student can go. And, and what's important is that they know what it is they've got to study so they can actually get across the finish line for the exam. I mean, nobody doubts that that's an important sort of scoping problem for students. And that's why the textbook, as the sort of core nugget of content, is still going to continue to be a really important piece of the learning process. It's just going to be a lot more interactive. This really gets to the point of why people are saying Salman Khan is a revolutionary, uh -huh. right? And he started Khan's Academy. Bill Gates uses his videos that mm -hmm. are up on YouTube to teach his kids. 
what's going on here in the classroom and how is that going to be inform what you're doing in, in terms of a textbook that you're selling the students right so an open educational resource like uh, Khan Academy is one of many different free resources and I think there's a whole confluence of change occurring in uh, in, the, in this industry overall and it's there's no question that the idea that somehow a, a book a tome of information uh, selling for two hundred dollars a piece is going to be as popular five years from now as it is today is of course absurd and I think what you see in Khan Academy and what you see in many of these open educational resources overall is a drift toward the good enough I mean you know he's not doing the level of curation and perfection that you might see in a, you know, a majors biology textbook, but it's 80% of the benefit for 20% of the effort. And I think you're going to see that start to erode the core textbook market. From Inkling's perspective, it's about content that makes sense for somebody learning something. And today we choose to partner with the big publishers because they've got a great position in the market with their relationships with professors and that sort of thing. Um, we're absolutely enthusiastic about working with any and all kinds of content partners that can take advantage of the platform. But as a you know, two-year-old company that's just getting off the ground, we've got to keep ourselves focused on at least one core thing. No, that's cool. How many titles today do you have? We now have over 50 full-length titles, all of which are interactive and sort of enhanced to the level that, um, you know, that I'll show you. And, uh, Can you give me a sense of some of the, of the titles? Uh, yeah, so you there's you know, McGraw-Hill's best-selling biology title, which is Brooker Biology. You've got W.W. Norton's best history title. History titles are awesome, by the way. There's so much beautiful primary source material looking in it, like you know, the, the original documents of, of the Declaration of Independence. All that stuff sort of integrated. Um, really cool music content where you can actually listen to the symphony as you, uh, as you study it. Um, there's just a ton of uh, really fantastic uh, titles across a really broad spectrum of topics. Human anatomy is is cool. Dissection, seeing a step-by-step -step guide on where to make your incisions. Can you show me that? Or yeah. So let me start by showing you one of my favorite titles, which is um, is a biology title from McGraw Hill. And as you come in and you look at the content, uh, there's you know the basic stuff that you're learning. Let's say in this case we're learning about blood and blood components. Anytime there's a term that comes from the glossary, I can just tap that term and it gives me the definition straight from the glossary. If I come down, of course, anything that looks like it should be tappable is, so I can always come in and see a nice high resolution image. But I can, if I want to, in this case, for example, see um, this lattice structure for heme, which is a, an important concept when you're studying hemoglobin, I can just tap heme and it jumps in and it actually renders out that molecule in 3D. Wow. And I can see the molecule, I can see the structure, I can understand the relationship between structure and function, which is really the goal. Um, and obviously you can't, you know, you can't spin a 3D molecule on paper. Um, yeah. You can't spin it on a Kindle either, which is why the iPad is such an important device. Well, let's. We should talk about the Kindle in a second because they're co they're coming out with a tablet mm -hmm. that's based on Android. But um, uh, can I write my notes right on top of that molecule as the teacher's talking about it? Yeah. So every single object inside of Inkling, whether it's a molecule or a test yourself diagram or an assessment question, can be annotated, and you can have conversation inside that object. So in the case of let's say this diagram on the human heart, right? I can, I can come in and see if, you know, these are just the labels that I've got to study for the anatomy test. If I tap this button, it strips off all those labels and gives me all these question marks where I can come in and tap and see if I know what I'm supposed to know. Okay. Um, but I can also just tap on this conversation tab and it actually lets me come in and hit plus and start a conversation about what I'm seeing here. Um, when I'm out in the text, of course, I can even anchor uh, against words, paragraphs, wherever I want, I can create notes. And so conversations can happen inside of individual pictures, diagrams, assessment questions. They can also, of course, happen in the main flow of the, of the textbook. Tell me just a little bit about the fundamentals of the company. How was it funded? So we're a Sequoia-backed company. We have um, about 70 employees in downtown San Francisco. Um, we just did our B round, did another $17 million in funding um, with Tanaya and Jafco. So we're, you know, we're, we're absolutely solid from a cash perspective. Um, we've got great traction. We're really excited with the number of people who are using it. As I mentioned, 50 schools all adopting um, the platform at some level. It's, uh, it's the sort of thing where you take a gamble to, to reinvent a medium. You do something that's just way different from anything that people have done before, and you worry whether when people see it, they'll love it as much as you loved it in design. And you know what? When people see Inkling, there's this aha moment where they recognize that the way that you explore content on a device like this is just so different from anything they've seen before. Yeah, I totally agree. It really, you guys get to the point when I say uh, on my blog, no apps, no sale, uh, referring to the tablet. Right. You're exactly what I'm thinking of. I'm gonna buy an iPad to go to school to learn from, from, from my teachers and from the industry. 
And it's going to be companies like yours that right. are just going to do it. I hope so. <laughs> Where do we learn more? Go to Inkling.com. Follow us on Twitter at Inkling or go to Inkling HQ on uh, YouTube. There's a ton of really awesome videos that show the product in a lot of detail. Very cool. And thanks for coming out and showing it to me. It's really great to meet the guys who are like, going to make my kids uh, textbooks. I think your son's going to like it. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.